Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Nature Flux. Now, Nature Flux is definitely one of my favorite games, and it's definitely an easy game to play. And the reason why it's one of my favorite games is because it's definitely about animals. Especially that lizard there is very attractive. I like reptiles. And so, there's a lot of different fluxes out there. And there's definitely a lot of reviews for flux out there. But there's not really a lot of reviews and how to play videos for Nature Flux. So I figured I w would go ahead and make this one of the very first videos I post on YouTube. And so, the, the, ru the rules are actually really simple. It starts off that everybody has three cards to start off with. And I already divvied out three cards for me and Manta. Manta, over there, he's going to be playing with me. He's going to be player two. And uh, you, you would start off by drawing a card from the deck, and then you would play a card from your hand. So that's the basic rules. And the reason why they might call it flux is because the rules are in a constant state of flux. Rules can change very fast. So why don't we get started and show you guys how to play. Now before I get started, there are four different kinds of cards in here. The green cards are keeper cards, and you'll need those in order to complete a goal. Goal cards are sort of like a pinkish color, but as you can see, we don't have a goal out right now because that's how the game starts. You don't start with any goals. But you do need in order in order to win the game, you do need to complete a goal. So a goal is eventually going to have to end up here on the table in play, and somebody could win it if they have what is required to complete the goal. Now what's required to complete the goal? Keeper cards. I mentioned earlier the green cards are keeper cards. So if you have the corresponding keeper cards, let's say the goal is basking. That's the goal, is to complete basking. What is required to complete basking? You need snakes, so you need the keeper card known as snakes, and you also need the keeper card known as sunshine in order for your snakes to bask in the sun. That makes sense, right? Basking in the sun, snakes basking in the sun, sunshine, snakes, completes the goal called basking. And if that was out and somebody had those two cards, they would automatically win the game. Now, they wouldn't necessarily have to have them in play. So you could have the keepers in play, or you could also have them in your hand. If you had both cards in your hand, and somebody played that goal, basking, you had snakes and sunshine in your hand, you would automatically win. You just show everybody here, I got snakes, I got sunshine, I win. It's as simple as that. If I had both of them out on the table, and the goal was there, once again, I'd win, because I have them both. Have them both here on the table. Let's say I just have uh, Sunshine, the Keeper Sunshine on the table, and I have snakes in my hand hidden away. Somebody plays Basking, well, once again, I'd win if I had snakes here and Sunshine here. Vice versa, I'd win, once again. If I played the goal... And I still win. So that's kind of cool. That's a cool aspect of this game that you can win even if it's on even on somebody else's turn. On Mantis' turn, for instance. And then there are two other types of cards that are in this game. There are the yellow cards, known as new rules. I told you that this game is in a state of flux and rules change. And so a, you could possibly play a new rule that would change things. And then there are blue cards. And blue cards are known as action cards, and they do a variety of different things. Let's say, um, let's just give an example. Let's say Manta over here, he has snakes in play, and the goal basking is out, and all you need is sunshine and snakes to complete it. Let's say I have sunshine hidden away in my hand, and he has snakes in play. But obviously, we both can't win because we, bo we both can't win. So only one of us could win this game. Meaning I would have to have both of his cards in order to win. I mean, I would have to have snakes and I'd have to have sunshine in my hand or in play. But he's obviously got snakes. So there's a blue card known as steal a keeper in front of another player, basically. And so if I played that blue card steal a keeper, I could steal his snakes and then I'd have it here, and then I would automatically win because now I have snakes and I have sunshine. And so there's, like I said, blue action cards can do a variety of different things. And so those are the four basic cards in the game. Now, if this is your first time playing, you'll never play 
with cards known as creeper cards. We won't get into them too much, but these creeper cards are not in this game. So if you've played it many times, then you'll be ready for a creeper card. Creeper cards make things a lot more difficult to win the game for sure, and they can definitely mess up your hands for sure. So that's that's those are creeper cards, and there's three of them all in together, all together. But we're not playing with the creeper cards, so don't worry about what they actually do. But nobody, let's just say for the point of argument in this game, nobody wants to get a creeper card. Even if it's the other player that has a creeper card, you still don't want them to have it, much less you have it. That's why most people don't want to see a creeper. They don't want it. They don't want it at all. Nobody does. Nobody wants to see it in somebody else's in front of them either. So, anyways. So, creepers are bad for everybody concerned, rather than just simply the person who has it. Anyways. So, we're not playing with creepers. So, I'm going to go ahead and start the game off. And so, I draw one card into my hand. And then, I have to play a card. I don't have a choice. I still have to play a card. And I've got... Two goals, and ooh, I've even got to steal a keeper action. What a coincidence. Hmm. Well, there's no keeper to steal, so playing that right now would not do me any good. So I'll hold on to all three of these cards and actually play the card I just got, which is a new rule, which replaces draw one. So now, every time we play this game, instead of drawing one card, we will draw two cards, and then we will play a card. So this... And even says it on the card. Replaces draw rule. If you just played this card, draw extra cards as needed to reach two cards drawn. And if you understand that, what it means is, if you don't understand that, it means I need to draw an extra card to make it two cards for this turn that I've drawn. So now I have drawn two cards. And that ends my turn. And so now it's his turn, and he's actually going to draw two cards to start with. So let's see what Manta has. Well, let's see here. He's got Mammal's Goal, he's got the Bears, he's got Birds, he's got an Action, and he's got another Goal. Well, he's already got one Mammal for the Goal Mammals, so playing those two right now would not do him any good. Maybe he could play the Bears, but maybe he wants to hold off and not reveal that he's got something that could potentially win him the game later. So... For now, he's going to play this keeper known as Birds and play it in front of him. And he's going to keep these other two cards hidden from me. Technically, I wouldn't see these cards because it would be his turn. I would not see his cards in his hand. But since uh, Mantis is so gracious, he's letting me show you guys how to play this game using him as a role model. Thank you, Manta. All right, so that would end his turn. Now it would be my turn, and I would draw two cards now right off the bat. And so these are my new cards, Leaves and Earthworms. Hmm, goal. Well, I've already got, uh, do I have dirt? I thought I had dirt. Maybe I don't have dirt. So you know what? I'm actually going to play this goal now. Play two. And so this would go right beside the new rule because it's a different rule. Play two. Play two replaces play rule. Play two cards per turn. If you have fewer than that, play all your cards. So now, from now on, we're going to draw two cards, and now we're going to have to play two cards. And so, since I've only played one card thus far this turn, I now must play another card this turn as well. So, what should I play? Well, I have a Keeper, so let's play that. I'm going to play Leaves. Okay, that ends my turn. So now, now Manta here, he's going to have to draw two cards, and now he's going to have to play two cards. And so he's got Cave, and he's got... Might oaks from tiny acorns grow. Hmm. Well, he doesn't have seeds or trees, does he? He has to play two cards. So the first card he's going to play is he's going to play this new goal. Mighty oaks from tiny acorns grow. So if I had seeds and trees, I would automatically win. I don't. So I don't automatically win. It's a gamble. He plays that card. I could potentially have it, but I didn't. So he's he's safe, and he can continue his turn. And so now he's gonna play. He's gonna play this card known as Cave, and he's gonna keep the other cards hidden. He's not gonna show me he has bears. He doesn't want to show me he has bears, and that's his turn. Those are his two cards. So now I draw two cards, 
and I must play two cards. And they're both blue action cards. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to do this one first. Everybody gets one. So I set my hand aside with this card. That's what it's telling me to do. Then I count the number of players in the game. Well, it's just me and Manta, right? The other two over there are just uh, spectating. Um, so, including yourself. Then draw enough cards to give one card to each player. And then distribute them evenly amongst all the players. You decide who gets what. So I'm going to get to look at the top two cards here. And then I'm going to get to pick one to give to Manta. And then I'm going to keep the other one. Ooh, let's see here. Well, I don't like spiders. Even though technically, yeah, I know what he has technically, but technically I wouldn't know what he has realistically. I would possibly maybe give him hibernation location. But here's the thing. I wouldn't normally do that. Anyways, because I do not like spiders. So I would give him spiders regardless. Because I just would not like spiders. In real life, I don't like spiders. That's the only animal on the planet that just gives me the willies. Spiders, tarantulas. Thankfully, there's no tarantulas in this game. Just spiders. Still, I don't like either one of them. At all. So, so that's what I would normally have given him anyways. So I'm not cheating or anything like that. Because in reality, that's what I would have given him. Because I do not like spiders. So why would I want that in my hand? I'm going to give it to him. <laughs> so... Anyways, but I don't know that he has bears, so, but he does have caves, so now I'll think twice about um, playing Hibernation Location. Normally, I would think twice and only play this card, Hibernation Location, if I had no choice, because I know he has half of the equation there. So, we certainly don't want that. But, like I said, I would know that, so I could possibly play that, and he would automatically win, because he's got bears, and he's got a cave to complete hibernation location, which makes sense. In order for your bear to hibernate, it needs a location to hibernate. So it just makes sense. It goes well with the game, for sure. So I still played only one card. So I still need to play one more card this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and play this card here, Earthworms. And if he had that, he would automatically win. And the goal replaces the current goal. That's what happens. You can only have one goal at a time. So if he had dirt and worms, he would automatically win to, cre to create earthworms. <laughs> kind, of, kind of funny, too. Definitely. All right. So now it's his turn. He would draw two more cards. And he would then play those cards. And so he's got a new rule here known as Hand Limit 3, which would require us to discard a lot of cards, possibly which may or may not be in his best interest at this moment. Um, he's going to go ahead and play his Spider's card. And then he still needs to play one more card. So he's going to go ahead and play the card known as Mud. Water plus Dirt. If you win with this goal. Well, even though you won and that was cool and all, I'd still think it would be hilarious if this is the card that uh, lets you win the game. Mud. <laughs> but, like I said, that is the next goal. And if I had water and dirt, or if he had water and dirt, he would automatically win. But, obviously, that's not the case, because nobody's claiming victory here. And so now he's played his two cards, and his turn is done. Alright, so now it's my turn. So I will draw two cards. And so now I've got Decay, and I've got Taxation. Hmm. Well, let's see. I have to play two cards now. Steal a keeper. Hmm. Shells and fish. Hibernation location. I don't have either one of those. Lizards, snakes, tadpoles, or frogs. That doesn't really help me at all, does it? So, but I have to play two cards. So I don't have much choices here. Um, okay, we'll play this one. Just to get rid of that one. Decay. Worms and mushrooms. Um, hmm. Oh, I, that should be gone. I played that earlier. That should be gone. And then... I don't have much to play. I don't have any, even, any good keeper cards. 
Steal a Keeper doesn't work for me right now because it doesn't, it wouldn't help with my strategy. So, I think we'll just go with this goal and replace this one. Shells and fish to create shellfish. Okay. Hopefully I get some keepers soon because I like playing keepers more than I do goals and other other things. He seems to be getting all the keepers though. All right. So now it's his turn and he would draw two cards. And once again, he gets another keeper. Ooh, and he's got a new roll. He's, gonna, he's actually going to play all of these. So he's going to play um, his seeds. So now he's got those four. And then he's going to play draw three. This would replace draw two. So draw two is out, and now we've got draw three cards. And so then he would draw an additional card for his turn, and then it would be the end of his turn. So now I draw three cards. One, two, and three. And I still have to play two cards. Sunshine and leaves, photosynthesis. I've got leaves, but I do not have sunshine. Ooh, 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 ooh I like this one. Sweet, I'm going to go with this one, because I have to play two cards, right? I think I just won the game. How? Well, you'll find out shortly. So first, I'm going to play Exchange Keepers. Pick any keeper another player has on the table and exchange it for one that you have on the table. So, he doesn't have bears yet, but um, so I might still not win, but we'll go ahead and exchange Keepers. So I'm going to take his <laughs> cave card, and he's going to get my leaves card. And that's what happens with that. Leaves and seeds. He's got that now. And that's how that one works. I just exchanged, exchanged keeper cards. Then if I technically had, if he had bears in play, I would then get to play this and steal his bears which would work with my goal that I took from him to begin with, which was, you know, hibernation, location. But once again, I don't have... He does not have that in play, so it just helped him big time. See, sometimes it's good. Not Sometimes it's good not to play all your good keepers because, you know, in that case, I would have been able to steal from him later down the road, obviously. So, you know, that's how that would have worked. But, hmm... Uh, I guess I still have to play a card, though, regardless, right? So I'm going to do Taxation. Each player must choose one card from his or her hand and give it to you. Yeah. So that's what we'll do. And he would get to choose which card that he would give me, of course. And so just to make the game go shorter, or should I say the end of the video shorter, just to show you how it works, let's say he decides to give me bears. Maybe he forgot uh, that he I have um, hibernation location or something. He decides to give me that. Well, I still wouldn't win until my next turn because I would still have to get the goal out there. But that's how that would work. And then I would win on my next turn as soon as I got the goal out there. And maybe he forgot that I had stolen that from him earlier. Hibernation, location, or should I say, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know how I got it. Maybe it was taxation earlier. I don't know. Maybe I played it earlier. I might have forgotten. But I hope that explains how to play this video without uh, without making it too confusing by doing it that way. But uh, I didn't want to make this video go too long because it takes forever to upload to YouTube anyway, the longer it is. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of how to play Nature Flux, and that's basically the gist of how that would work. Rules would change, you'd play keepers, you'd try to complete a goal, you know, and you could only have one goal at a time, and that's what you would try to do, and you could do this in a variety of ways, using even some of these action cards to help you in that process. So, I hope that explains sort of how to play the game better. If you liked this video, I hope you did. It's my first real review video on YouTube, so... I hope you guys liked it, and uh, Manta was a good sport, weren't you, Manta? Thank you for being a good sport, Manta. All right, signing off.